What's up guys? So now we're going to be talking about a concept called the inverse of a function. And the way that I'm going to explain this concept is I'm going to go through this example where we have to find the inverse of f of x equals x squared plus 2. And I'm going to do it in multiple ways. So the first way we can go about it is by making a table of values. So I start off by making a table of values for our function x squared plus 2. And I use x values from negative 2 to positive 2. And then all you do when you're making the table of values for the inverse of the function is that you just switch the x and y values. Now one note I want to make is this notation here, this f of negative 1, x, this is just notation for, it, the, um, for the inverse. And this negative 1 up here, it does not mean that you take the function to a power of negative 1. It's just a certain type of notation. So you just write the negative 1 there, and it represents the inverse of a function f of x. So going back to the table of values, as we said, all we do with the inverse is we switch the corresponding x and y values. So the x value here would be 6, and the y value would be negative 2 and likewise for the other points. So we'd have 2 and 0, 3 and 1, 6 and 2. So again, if we're given a function f of x and we make a table of values for it, the table of values for the inverse would just be the x and y values switched. The second way that we can find the inverse is algebraically. And what we would do is we would interchange the x and y values and then isolate for y. So what do I mean by this? So let's rewrite our function. f of x equals x squared plus 2. And as we've mentioned before, f of x we could also rewrite as y or vice versa. So we interchange the x and y values, so the y we would change into an x, and the x we would change into a y, and then we isolate for y. So let's bring the 2 over, so we'd have x minus 2 is equal to y squared, and then square rooting both sides, we'd have y equals the square root of x minus 2. Remember the square root can be plus or minus. And this here represents the inverse of this function. So if we were to take this relation here and make a table of values for it, we would get this same table here. Now the third way that we can go about this is by graphing it. And the inverse of a function is a reflection of f of x over the line y equals x. And I'll get into what that means in a second. But for now, all I did was I started off by graphing the function that we were given x squared plus 2. So I took this, uh, these points that we made in the table of values in step 1, and I just plotted them here. So now let's plot the points of the inverse. So 6 and negative 2 would be here. 3 and negative 1 would be here, 2 and 0 would be here, 3 and 1 would be here, and then we got 6 and 2. So this would look something like this. And this represents our inverse graph, f of negative 1x. Now if you look closely, the inverse is a reflection of the original function f of x over the line y equals x. So I drew this line y equals x here, and each point, so this corresponding point, this is 1 and 3, corresponds to 3 and 1. This 0 and 2 corresponds to 2 and 0, and it's always reflected over this line. So that's another way that you can get the inverse if you're given the graph of the function is just reflect every point. And step 3 follows the same process that we had in step 1 and 2. We're just constantly interchanging the x and y values here in the table, here algebraically, and here graphically. Whenever you reflect a graph over the line y equals x, what you're doing essentially is interchanging those x and y values. 
And the fourth and final way to find an inverse is we reverse the operations in reverse order. So what do we mean by this? Well, if we look at our original function f of x, what are we essentially doing? We're taking an input x, we square it, and then we add 2, and then we get our output f of x. Well, when we take the inverse, what we do is we go in reverse order and we reverse all the operations. So I wrote out the inverse process here. So we take an in input x, we subtract 2, which is the reverse operation of adding 2, and then we square root everything, and then we end up with our output, the, uh, the inverse. So notice how this here, this process corresponds to what we got here. We take an input, subtract 2, and then we square root everything, and we end up with our output, the inverse. This can actually also be rewritten as the inverse notation. Sorry, I missed that. So in conclusion, we showed four ways of how to find the inverse of a function. And whenever you're asked to find the inverse of a function in your homework, I would highly suggest that you go through all four ways, even if you're just asked to do it one of the ways, just so you can get really comfortable and maximize your chances of getting it correct on the test.